call the meeting. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Call the meeting to order. I'm not going to do a roll call. Uh, Jody, you can just tell everybody that's attending. Um, we'll, we have the November 17, 2022 minutes and I'd like a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes as written. Thanks, Chris. Second? I'll make a second. Thank you. Um, any discussion, changes, revisions, edits? Okay, all in favor, aye. Raise a hand and whatever. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our first item on the agenda today um, is again a birth to five presentation. I know last meeting, and if you look back at the November minutes again, we had some discussion around that in terms of, of what um, other counties are looking at. I had the pleasure of meeting or talking with Tammy. She gave me a really great kind of presentation on some of the things that are going on in our region that she represents. Um, Tammy is the um, regional council manager for region 41. And so I thought it'd be interesting. She was going to give us a little presentation today. Uh, I asked her just to present statewide because we're mental health boards are all over the place. So I thought if we could go statewide and then she could just share some things, initiatives and things, what's happening within our region because there might be some transference of some of the things. So uh, with that, I did have your bio, Tammy. I Everybody has a copy of it. So I'm not gonna go through reading your bio, but you see her level of experience. I know she had over 20 years of experience with early childhood. So just a great person for that position. So with that, I'm gonna give you the floor. She has a PowerPoint. So if we could share screen, Jody, and get her going. Can you see that? Not yet. There we oh, go. Okay. Got it. Okay, great. All right, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Um, it's nice to be with you all today. I'm Tammy Robel, and I am one of 39 regional council managers in the state of Illinois. And so um, I cover Madison County. That is my charge. And I have two staff members that um, carry out that work with me. And so we work for Birth to Five Illinois. And Birth of Five Illinois, I'm going to tell you a little bit of, a bit more about it. We're all about uh, bringing families to the center of the work, raising and elevating their voice, collecting their stories in order to transform the early learning education and care system in the state of Illinois. Um, and so this is a brief video about what Birth of Five Illinois is. For the sake of time, I'm going to not show you that video, but I did put the link on the bottom, um, and I can also uh, throw this in chat as well. And so this video was about a seven to eight minute video and uh, it kind of summarizes the work. The presentation, um, the information that I'm gonna share with you today has uh, much more information in it, um, more up-to-date information. And then certainly uh, this video does not contain our county specific work. So I look forward to sharing that with you. So um, we have a story. Uh, and so I wanted to share a little bit about how we got to the point we're at now. Uh, so um, the when COVID hit, um, a lot of things were exposed. And one of those things that were exposed was our current early care and education system in the state of Illinois, exposed in a way that made us realize that we are not providing the best care that we can be providing to children and families, and specifically those children under the age of six. So before, like pre-kindergarten years. So the governor's office um, wanted to, uh, the goal is to make Illinois the best state for children and families. And so one of those things was um, um, bringing, put, putting together or finding funds to uh, fund someone to do some research uh, and collect data and come up with a regional scan. And so the, there was a state team that was founded, uh, gosh, a little over a year ago. We're in year two of the work. And their charge was to um, 
examine what other states have done that have been successful in kind of revamping or redesigning the early care and education system. And so there were three model states. And from that, uh, what this what the state team in Illinois determined was that we can't do things, we can't do things the same way and have that work for the whole state. That it's definitely region specific, county specific, town specific. And so the design is a regional infrastructure which is why we have 39 different offices that represent the 39 different regions in the state of Illinois. And what we are doing is looking at um, many different facets of early care and education in the state by community. And so really assessing communities, um, you're probably all familiar with community assessment. So it kind of, it, it, it is similar to a community assessment. And I'll share with you on how we're collecting that data and, um, analyzing that data with groups of stakeholders across the state. Okay, so Birth of Five Illinois is housed with INCRA, which is the Illinois Network for Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies. They do a lot of work and give a lot of support to child care centers across the state. They offer a lot of professional development funding. Um, they are they control the Gateways credentialing system, if you've heard of Gateways. As I said before, there are 39 offices, and you can see on this map uh, where those offices are. And so for ease of um, splitting up the regions for the data collection and analyzation, we share the same boundaries as the regional offices of education. So Madison County uh, is one of those regions. We are wanting to, our goal, and we will uh, collect information, write this regional scan, submit it to the governor's office, um, and make policy changes that are going to make uh, this state the best state for children and families. So this is all of us across the state. Our state leader is right up here in the right hand corner. Her name is Cicely Fleming. Uh, and I have information for you so you can reach your, uh, are you all in Madison County or cover Madison County? No, these are. Um, okay. And oh, that's right. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you, um, can you all see the website as I hover over team birth to five Illinois? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you, yeah. okay. So it's www.birth to five, sorry, birth to five il.com backslash team, backslash number, regional dash managers. This link will give you access to the 39 different regional council managers and it's split up by county. Some of us um, are, in, are over multiple counties, but you'll be able to find your county in there and reach out to your specific regional council manager from that link. And you'll see why um, it's important for you to reach out as we continue. So our charge is to increase capacity to existing programs and then potentially new programs and services to meet those needs locally. We have councils that we set up, both action councils and family councils that are working with community partners. The governor's office has stated that we want Illinois to be the best state for children and families so they are ready for kindergarten and ready for success. And racial equity is at the middle of this work, at the center of this work. So we're elevating family voice um, and then really focusing on increasing racial equity and work with the priority population. So there are um, 12 different priority populations that we're working with based on the um, Illinois uh, Early um, Commission's work that was done recently. So I wanted to share our vision with you today. Um, this vision has changed because of the input that we've received from, family, from families and from community stakeholders. So, 
We are reimagining a more equitable system that respects family and community voice and works to make sure that that voice is centered and prioritized at every level of decision making in Illinois. So we recently went to Springfield. We have another trip scheduled next month to talk to the elected officials. Um, and they have, have been invited to our council meetings and um, becoming more involved in the work, which is really exciting. Our mission is to create this infrastructure that's gonna amplify that input from the specific communities in the state. So we develop policies and find funding priorities, and we support that mobilization of these specific communities to build and sustain that equitable access to inclusive, high quality, early childhood services for all children and families. Um, I got into this work because I, I live in Madison County. My kids were um, educated in Madison County. I have a daughter with Down syndrome. I have a son with autism. Um, I My career was switched uh, when we were pregnant with my daughter because we knew ahead of time that she had Down syndrome. So we quickly, we quickly became involved with everything to do with early intervention. Um, and then I went back to school and got my credential to be a developmental therapist and spent a lot of time doing that work. Um, quickly uh, realized that there were a lot of holes in early childhood, um, even for a privileged white woman, right? Uh, and so I uh, started doing work in early intervention and did that for over 20 years. Um, and then started to do some work in the community, started to do some specific work in uh, in our community and then in, in Madison County and then in other communities where uh, services were scarce and started working with companies or agencies, service providers to come together build a network where they collaborated to conduct screenings um, and then enroll children into quality early care and education programming. And so when this initiative started uh, and I could make a difference in the, my home county, I jumped on it. So I wanted to share a little bit about our timeline. So we launched uh, our website in January. We have over five, we, we support, we have a way to support families who speak five different languages, English and Spanish are just two of those. Um, in February, and you might have uh, attended these, we had our regional kickoff events. They were advertised advertised from the, um, the state uh, and they were about, you know, here's our current data. This is the current data that we have. Uh, this is what uh, kind of what it means. Uh, and this is what we're gonna do with it. Come, please help us. And then um, at that time, they opened up interest forms for being involved in the Action and Family Council. They held some live webinars in March and then started establishing memorandum of understandings with some existing partners in the regional collaborations. Not all, collabor not all regions in the state of Illinois had um, those existing partnerships or, or, or um, formed uh, collaborations at that point. We still don't, but um, it's interesting. It's important to note that. So they began. They began hiring us, the regional council managers, in May, um, and then finished that hiring in November. They also opened up several different grants, so people could. Uh, so local collaborations that existed could receive funding to increase their work. And they also opened a grant where stakeholders could use the grant money to build a collaboration. And we're going to be offering another set of those grants to, to build a collaboration. So really getting into communities that don't have a collaboration and setting that up for sustainability purposes. Each of our offices has a family engagement, family and community engagement specialist and administrative support. So three of us in each of the 39 offices. All right, so you can see here, we awarded 20 of those collaboration grants in September. And then we started having these council meetings, these action and family council meetings. Um, 
The first family council meetings were held in October and November. So you can see we just really started holding those and then um, fully staffed in December. Okay, so I've been talking about this action council and family council. Uh, so we have uh, all of our action councils right now are full. We're going to be looking at those again in the fall. Um, so if any of you are interested in, in, in participating in those, this is what we, the, these are those key roles. This, these are key roles of the Action Council. So they're made up of parents and family members. Um, we are recruiting people from underrepresented populations. So we make sure we have that voice at the table, but really making sure that we have all voices at the table. Our members consist of early childhood staff, early childhood administrators, um, people from Head Starts, from private family care homes, from publicly funded agencies, school districts, um, also people from our prevention initiative uh, program, so our home visitors, um, definitely working with our regional office of education and uh, have a staff member from each of those offices on our council encouraging those elected officials to become involved. And we do some elected officials that serve on action councils in the state. And then also open that up to healthcare because we know that healthcare is a really important uh, foundational need for children and families. And then working with staff, even at universities who specifically have programs that exist for early care and education training, working with our CCRNRs, um, that do that coordinated intake. Also working with business members because we know our workforce is impacted by the uh, uh, access or lack of to early care and education for families who have children and also working with our faith community. So I said earlier, we're conducting a regional scan. We're really looking at the gaps. You know, where are those gaps where we are missing services for families or families can't access the services that are in place? I already mentioned really making sure that families are in the middle of this and we're honoring their voice and sharing their stories. It is definitely a team effort. At the end of this, which is gonna be this coming summer, we're gonna submit an annual report to the governor's office. That annual report is going to also contain recommendations and then um, hopefully at that point, we'll be able to follow up with uh, creating action plans and making some significant changes across the state of Illinois. So family councils, uh, part of this work is making sure that families are at the center and um, we don't really have, people have been working in silos across the state as far as uh, uh, agencies that are elevating family voice. And so we wanted to include families at the center because that's where the power comes from. That's those. That's the reason why we're doing what we're doing. We are also gonna open up our family council membership in the fall of this year, 2023, to welcome any new members and let any of our current members take a break if they'd like. Uh, if you know of anybody that's interested in becoming involved, um, you can contact your regional council manager and get some more information. We are recruiting families that have children under the age of eight and have some experience with early uh, care and education in the state of Illinois. So definitely the Family Council works alongside the Action Council. Um, they are looking at data. We have two meetings a month for Family Council, two meetings a month for Action Council. Those are all hybrid. Uh, and they are also looking at those gaps and, and really making sure that they're bringing family voice from the rest of their community to those meetings. This is what the regional scan is going to entail. So definitely gonna look at the demographics of each of those communities or those regions, those 39 regions, um, analyze those local community collaborations or lack thereof, uh, look at the different programs where they exist and where they don't exist, analyze that slot gap. And so in all cases across the state, all 39 offices, there is a slot gap. Some of those are more significant than others, but there's definitely more children than there are opportunities for families to enroll those children into a quality early care and education program. 
we're also going to be looking at the workforce and how that affects the workforce and looking at the engagement in the community. Do we have enough systems in place to fully engage parents, families, and caregivers? Also analyzing our regional strengths and needs, which make up all those different things that I just listed, make up that. And then, like I said earlier, offering those recommendations. This is how we would love for you to get involved. We have a main state website, which is that birth, that first one there, birth to five il.com. When you go on that website, you can subscribe to get monthly state updates from our director, Cicely Fleming, which is really nice because it captures everything that's going on across the state with this work and it summarizes it. And then we also have specific web pages. So each third, each office has a web page, or each regional office has a web page. Um, so you can access those by going to that birth to five il.com backslash about backslash number. And then so like Madison County would be 41. Um, and it's just whatever that ROE number is for that region. But if if you know, you can definitely reach out to your regional council manager and find out more about how to, to locate them, or you can go on the state website and there's a link to get to our, our websites from there. We also have regional newsletters. And so each regional office has a separate um, website and a separate newsletter that's sent out at least once a month. And so if you'd like to do that, when you go on to that uh, region specific website, there's gonna be another subscribe button. And if you fill that out, you'll be able to receive those monthly um, newsletters from that, from that, um, uh, from that, um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, from that regional office. One of the things we're doing right now and really pushing this work right now is uh, interviews and focus groups and then soon to be surveys. And so for those folks that aren't, uh, a couple different things. The folks that weren't able to join a council and or represent one of the populations that we haven't heard from yet. We're really seeking those voices to uh, join us for an interview or a focus group so we can make sure we collect that data for that region scan. And the first step to do if you want to uh, uh, participate in one of those is to fill out that consent form that you'll find through that link that you see on joining interviewer focus groups. So right here, birth to five il.com backslash consent. We're offering dollar gift cards to anyone that um, participates in an interview or a focus group. So I encourage you to please share this information with your uh, with your community. And then the sign up for our statewide newsletter, you'll see that link when you go on to that, that, that website, birth5il.com. Any questions? Okay, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in Madison County. <laughs> so we have uh, 17 different members on our action council. Uh, we have nine members on our family council. Family council interest forms are going to be closing this Friday. And so if you know of anybody that lives in Madison County, works in Madison County, and cares for um, a child under the age of eight, we would love for them to consider submitting an interest form. If you go on the website, there's a direct link to the interest form, and I can also put that in chat. Um, we are getting ready to have a focus group February the 8th, I believe it is. I'll have to look that up. I'll put that invite in chat as well for teachers. And so if you are working with any preschool teachers, um, and this is specifically for folks that work in Madison County. So if you're working with any teachers that uh, work in Madison County as a, as a preschool teacher, uh, we'd love to have them fill out a consent for that focus group. Uh, we have identified in Madison County that we have, um, I, like to, I like to frame it like this because I think this is really powerful. If you have three children, whether you're a parent or a service provider, you have three children with the amount of quality, with the amount of early care and education spots available that we have, right? 
three children, you pick one of those children that's going to receive a spot. The other two don't get it, right? So you have three children. You can only choose one of those that can get into an early child care, child care education uh, program. So that's pretty powerful, right? Mm -hmm. um, we know that not all children and fam we know that not all families are going to want to enroll their child in a program, but they should have a choice. And they just don't. They just don't. So we have to change that. All right, that is all I had. If you have questions for me, though, later on, uh, feel free to reach me. I put my email down here at the bottom. It's T W R O B B E L at birth to five il.com. And Kathy, I will, yes, yes, I, I had a couple of things. Um, with that young of age, we are seeing children with mental health issues. I mean, we're getting calls at the office for referrals for where do you send someone that has a child that's under six. Are you interfacing as you're identifying children in the educational aspect of it, uh, child care? Do you provide resources to families? How do you manage that? Or is that something you're looking at? I know this is all in the in the development, but is that something that you're doing assessment on as you're doing assessment? We are not sharing resources with families. So that is not, um, that's not part of the work that we're doing. We're collecting the information. And so uh, we have um, mental health professionals that are on our councils uh, and they are sharing their insights with us so we can develop this regional scan and that information, the need for that will be represented in those regional scans if that comes up, you know, in, in the communities. And so um, I can't say uh, that I know that's a need all over, but I'm pretty sure uh, mm -hmm. that's a safe thing for me to um, project here. So I, I know that in Madison County, uh, something that's been raised at each meeting that we've had that we need more support for children and families. We need, we need more support for service providers. Um, you know, it, there's, there's a whole bunch of um, evidence regarding stories that folks are sharing with us that, that shows us that that's a need. Uh, so yeah, well, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. And I, and I know with our, our older youth, you know, the schools are identifying hugely the number of kids uh, that children, you know, affected with anxiety, depression, everything coming out of COVID, because you, you you mentioned COVID is kind of the impetus for, for lots of things that you're looking at now. And again, knowing that younger children were Im impacted by it as well, the whole family, families were impacted by that, just... Um, like I said, there, I, I don't know that there were, there are large numbers, but it's like when you need it, you need it. I don't right. care what age you are and you know, what's out there. And I'm just thinking that there might be some identification as they're working with families and children in early childhood, that you're going to be identifying something within the family, possibly in regards to, to mental health issues as well. Absolutely. But, Go ahead. That, that, that has been a topic that's been um, that's been raised in our family council and our Madison County Family Council. Uh, and in talking to the other regional uh, council man managers, that is something that is um, definitely on the table. What I would encourage you to do is reach out to your regional council manager. Almost all of us are going to have a, fa a focus group with mental health professionals. Uh, because we want to make sure this information is represented in that regional scan. Okay. And so if you reach out to your regional council manager and ask them about the fo in a focus group or an interview um, for or, or with mental health providers, service providers, I'm sure that they will take you up on that. Uh, and, and if you're not able for, uh, if you're not able to participate in a focus group, um, definitely, you know, a one on one interview. And I would, would be think, appreciated. Yeah, go and ahead. I would think when it's when your work is published that it'll probably come out in both a state format uh, in terms of recommendations as well as individual county focus on what your findings were per area. 
Absolutely. And if you want to stay uh, up to date with what's going on in our meetings, there's very detailed notes on each of our websites. So you can see both Family and Action Council meeting notes on each website. I was I was asking questions also for a reason, and I was going to cover it later on in our on our agenda. But the National Federation of Families, because you talk about a lot about family engagement, and working with families, um, and they're going to be doing a, a conference in Chicago in the fall, and wondering if that might be something I, you wouldn't mind me giving out either Sicily or your name as mm -hmm. a contact if you want to send me Cicely's information, because sure. I did get a list together of larger organizations um, to to give them as they're organizing this conference, looking for call for proposals, as well as just networking and learning Illinois and what's available in Illinois in all aspects. Wonderful. What's the name of the conference, Deborah? It's, it's the National Federation of Families. I, I don't think they have a, a quote unquote theme title yet for it. They're in the okay. process of just hitting the road and getting this all together, but okay. that's the group that's organizing it. Okay, wonderful, great. I'll make sure I let Cicely know to be expecting a message from you and I'll get you her contact information. All right, thank you. Any Absolutely. questions, anyone else questions? Not hearing any. All right. Well, thank you for your presentation and for the information that you shared. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so oh. Thanks for all that you do. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank bye -bye. you. All right. Bye-bye.